All right, yeah. Okay, welcome to the Heroes Brawl, everyone. Uh, Toots Olive, why don't you go over the rules? Absolutely, uh, Locopodia. <laughs> Today we're going to be playing a three-deck unified Singleton Conquest Heroic Brawl. The rules for this brawl are that only one copy of any non-sigil card may appear across the three deck. Also, each deck may not contain cards with a faction that does not correspond to the hero for that deck. You may play four copies of the hero in the deck. Otherwise, each deck may only have one card, one copy of any individual card. And finally, each deck may only win once in the series, and this will be a best of five match. Okay. So we don't put necessarily a timer on it other than just be like, hey, I'm done, are you close to done? And whoever finishes first will set the timer. Okay, sounds good. That'll work. Yeah, that should be solid. Okay, so let me mute myself and unmute myself real quick. And all right, uh, ready, set, go. Ready, set, go. Here we go, guys. We're brewing with these three cards, singleton format, uh, except that we're running, of course, uh, the whole full 75. So first things first, we've got Cameron. Uh, I believe non-power cards were allowed correct so we can run crests and that kind of thing. I don't think we're trying to mess up our own power base. So probably the first thing to lead with would just be, well, not actually sure. Maybe it was non-sigil cards. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> or I might already have this rule wrong. That's okay. Anyways, so with Cameron, like the best thing to probably lead with is going to be a lot of revenge units, a lot of straight up like token stuff. This is going to be a pretty easy deck to build because like there's a lot of this deck has been built before. People know know a lot of what's going on with it, and there's some pretty good stuff happening. Lorai is going to be the most interesting, but also Lorai is entirely mono blue, so that's going to be the one that's easiest to sort of figure out as far as like what it is that we want to divide amongst. Uh, so like. Let's pick the cards in Cameron's Colors first. Winchest Cargo, uh, Display of Ambition, Blaze, Brel Solist Apostate seems fine, even though it's a little bit expensive. Um, you know, and it's not terribly suited towards Cameron, so that might be a card that gets cut later on. But uh, we'll, we'll ditch the crests for now. Somebody can verify whether or not it's non-sigil or non-power, but I don't think we're in a particular hurry here. Okay. So, things that we can do here. We can do straight revenge cards. There's actually a bunch of decent options. Uh, if I want to do paladins, that'll work out pretty well. There's a lot of green, purple paladins, so there's potentially a lot of room to actually do stuff like that. And Cameron can sort of support that strategy a little bit with Hojin and other cards that actually help that out. Um, I think most interesting things to do, we do want to get some merchants going. Uh, so let's get the merchants in our colors, since we have access to three different colors of merchants. Send Wastes, Red Canyon, and Hidden Road, combined with Karendin, potentially Winchest and Ixtune, depending on how it is we feel. I think we're mostly interested in getting only one color of merchant here, because that's going to be the best option for like setting up and getting things going. Uh, so the deck needs Madness, and probably the best place to put it is going to be in the market. Combust is also a pretty reasonable option. I would say that that's probably something that actually wants to be in the main board. And we're also going to want assembly line and any sort of uh, Grenadin generators, things that actually do some cool stuff. I think Secret Passage is a definite for this one. Any type of double damage stuff is going to help out. Incendiary Slike Might can really mess up markets, and that's actually kind of important because assumably every deck is going to have a market. So that seems very reasonable. I could feasibly, if we wanted to get really tricky with it, go to two drops, uh, in which case I could run um, the one um, the one golem, but I don't think that's actually a good idea here. So, okay, so secret passage makes a lot of sense. We have a lot of like interesting stuff going on there. Um, I might want to try for big weapons or something interesting with the like the time buff cards with Delif. Maybe do like tokens and stuff. I have to decide a little bit on what kind of shadow cards I want to like distribute amongst these whole sets. So like. Do we want to like keep the Shadow Merchant for Delif? That actually seems like a reasonable option. We should definitely do that. So yeah, let's keep the Shadow Merchant for Delif so we can run Shadow Merchant and the Zine in one. And then we can run uh, Street Urchin is pretty good. We could definitely do Street Urchin without a lot of issues. That card actually deals direct damage to our opponent, so we can set it up for Cameron a little bit better. And then we'd also be able to run Argentport Instigator for the same reasons. That card actually deals direct damage, so if it attacks in, we'll be able to sacrifice uh, if something else attacks in, we'll be able to sacrifice to get Cameron bigger. Uh, Cameron herself needs to be the focus of the deck. We want to make her bigger constantly, so we're going to do Swear Vengeance. We're going to do eh, we're going to do Linger Regent's Tomb because Regent's Tomb is pretty strong, and we actually have access to good sites here. We have a lot of powerful cards that we can play with. Dizo's Office is good, uh, although Dizo's Office is very expensive and potentially should be in our Delif deck. So let's let's consider 
passing that back and leaving it for later. Crown Watch Trader seems very strong and is going to be in only our colors, so that seems like a pretty good option. Uh, we can do Bart. Bart is unblockable and can get relic weapons, which may be useful if we're going to be trying to pick up anything in particular. Stone Powder Alchemist is 100% what we want, and Unfinished Business, maybe. We'll see about that. That's going to be more of a tricky one. I think Makdo definitely belongs in here. Revenge stuff in general is going to really help out with Cameron. This is like the most easy deck to build, so I think we're we're just basically looking for good, good stuff. Golem Press. I like Golem Press. That seems like a very good suggestion. Yeah, we'll go ahead and go with that. Only multiple sigils, but not of crests. Okay, that's good to know. Um, so, removal-wise, we do need to have some removal in this deck. Isolate is pretty strong. Uh, Cure the Prodigy cares about very little in this deck. I don't think there's anything we're particularly interested in there. Uh, we will have access to Annihilate. We will have access to Suffocate. We'll have access to a lot of removal, but we want to save some of it for our Shadow Time deck as well, because Annihilate and Suffocate and those kinds of things are going to be pretty strong in this deck. So green removal like Vanquish, Vanquisher's Blade, um, Isolate, those cards are going to be pretty strong. And one other thing that we can grab that's going to be really, really good is that... Uh, the card that is specifically built for this type of deck. It's a four cost, what's it called? I never remember the name of this one. It's a removal card. Citywide ban is obviously not a good idea. We're not gonna play citywide bans or anything that bans out uh, like the person's actual setup because that's not a lot of fun. GMR's interesting, I don't think I want it. I wouldn't mind a little bit of silence in the form of like Valkyrie Enforcer, um, but probably not in the form of uh, something bigger than that. Minotaur Plate Maker makes everything bigger, could be pretty reasonable, might be a thing to grab depending on what we're doing. Uh, Peacekeeper's Prod, that's a pretty good way to get some damage across, but Necessary Measures is the card that we're looking for. And any Relic Weapons that we want to run? So I'm thinking about hybrid cards. What's interesting in hybrid? Sanguine Sword, Sword of Akaria, Star Steel Dash is okay. We could actually grab that with Bart, and then we could get some decent benefits from that. That seems okay. Might be might be worth it since this is singleton format. We can actually just like have a little bit of fun. Uh, I don't think it's going to be a super important card, but it's got a little bit going on. Howling Kurtar, basically like good four drops that have like reasonable setups are going to be decent. I'm not going to do a lot of weapons, but I am going to look for. Let's check our curve out. 18 units right now. Uh, ones, twos, threes, very heavy on fours, so let's go ahead and cut that Kurtar back out. Uh, maybe actually ditch the Plate Maker too. I don't know, Plate Maker's gonna be reasonable here. It really buffs up a bunch of units and does some good things. We'll take Blood Letter. Inquisitor's Halberd cares about Valkyries. I don't care about Valkyries. I'm gonna do Valkyrie Enforcer though. All right, two drops are going to be important. Revenge ones in particular, if we can do it. Talk Tick, Stalwart Silverwing, Crown Watch Press Gang. Uh, probably survives, depending on what we got. We got Grenard and Drone. Uh, Tinker Drone Dropper makes Grenard and Drones, which we can then sacrifice. That seems very reasonable. Deep Forge Plate is like a big old stompy pile that we can actually throw into the market. Uh, Rise to the Challenge allows us to pick up whatever we want, so generally we're going to try to get as many of those as possible. I'm going to stick a Righteous Fury in the side, as well as a uh, Heretic's Cannon, since that'll allow us to do the uh, big Overwhelm thing that we want to do. Now, Market Power is going to be an interesting one. I feel like we should probably go with Depleted Power, like a Coin. Um, which coins can we play? Emerald, Granite, and Amethyst. Of those three, uh, like we have... How many green merchants? We have a few. So Red Canyon, Send Wastes, and Hidden Road are our three, which gives us access to two green merchants, plus we're going to play, I think, yeah, let's grab Emerald Coin, and then maybe we don't do Heretic's Cannon, but we are going to do Winchest Merchant for sure, because that one's got flying, and that's the kind of thing that we're looking for. We need Dark Return. For Cameron. Uh, anything that reads draw a unit from our void, like back for more, is really important. And anything with unblockable, like Thieves Pick or Secret Passage, gets us the damage we need to actually win the game. Uh, we still haven't done all of the removal. Flame Blast is going to be pretty important. I'd say that Torch is very reasonable here. Uh, we've already done Combust, but we could also do Necessary Measures if we chose to, which might get us some access to some Sight Kills, some or not Necessary Measures, um, Casualties of the Cause. All right, cool. So now we're really coming along. Emerald Coin was the card that I wanted to put in the market, so let's do that. 
And now we're at 46 out of 75. Uh, I do have pretty much everything I need. I got a Winchester Cargo. We're going to run a Seek Power as well. And we're probably going to run a Seek Answers. So this is like the basic package. Oh, we do have a lot of choices as far as like our package, but we also can't like run multiple copies of them. So that's going to be interesting. Uh, we have to be very careful about where we put our Seek Powers and our Seek Answers. Um, I think the colorless stuff should belong in the three color deck because that's going to be the hardest one to deal with. Uh, the other one that we can run here pretty easily is Roland's Favor and Caleb's Favor, and if we get one of each of those, like neither of those can be repeated, so that'll be easy to remember, and we can pretty well set that up. Caleb's Sanctum I don't really care about, but Caleb's Persuader actually has a lot of uh, potential, so let's go ahead and put that in. I'm going to ditch Burrell Solist Apostate, and this deck's looking pretty good. We got a big old pile of 1, 2, 3, 4s, a uh, decent amount of recursion. I think I want another like Grasping at Shadows in addition to Back for More, um, possibly even... Grasping at Shadow seems very important. Let's do From Your Void and figure out what we got. Uh, Vara Fate Touch seems reasonable. Display of Ambition is very good. Smuggler Stash is really expensive, so I'm probably not into it. Memory Dredger, too cheap. Surgeon Saw, that's fine. Umbrin Voidbringer, Eye for an Eye. Eye for an Eye is good, that's good removal. Uh, Shadowlands Guide, we don't care. Star Reader's Blade, that's a little bit better. Uh, I don't know if I love it. I'd probably play Corrupt and then... Abduct, Battlefield Scavenger, Remembrance. Remembrance is a shift, so I think we're not going to do that. Okay, cool. So that leaves us with 24 units, 7 attachments, 23 spells. That's too many spells. Let's cut a few of those, and we'll be ready to rock and roll. We got good removal overall. I'm using a decent amount of like different stuff that I want. I'm not going to run Unfinished Business this time. Uh, I do think I want most of my sort of like search cards that we can easily pick out our favorite cards. Necessary Majors and Rise of the Challenge are the big ones. Um, so Torch, Winchest Cargo, we're going to ditch Casualties of the Cause because we're always going to ditch Casualties of the Cause. Actually, let's ditch Corrupt and then we'll put Casualties in. We'll put Corrupt in with Delif. Eye for an Eye is Recursion, so it's got to stay in this deck. Uh, Caleb's Favor is fine. Seek Answers could potentially go somewhere else since it's not like a great card for getting particular power, and we could use that in our Delif deck. And then that gets us like a little bit more goodies as far as power goes. We're, we're, we're doing okay on power fixing, but we got to be a little bit more careful in general. Okay, still looking good though. I think we're pretty happy. Um, so that leaves, we got to do fixing. I'm going to cut Bloodletter since we got Surgeon Saw, Kalos Persuader, and a couple of other good ones. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to do Crest. Crest, crest, seat, seat, seat. Banner, banner, banner. <laughs> I just typed banner, banner, banner. Good, good stuff. And then add our power. Yep, somehow got more than one seat of vengeance. Okay, that is 25 power, 24 units, 6 attachments, 19 spells. Not bad for a start. Let's get it going. <sighs> That was solid. This is the only deck we can slay. Fair enough. That's actually a really good point. Let's get the slay in there. It is solid, solid removal, and we can do a lot with it. So let's cut Blaze. Yeah, I don't care about Blaze. Blaze for slay. Okay. Now, next up is... Let's do Delif next while we still have what shadow cards we used fresh in our minds, because that's going to be the tricky one. Uh, do we have a Xenon Insignia? Is that a... I can't remember if that was one of the... I'm pretty sure we don't. Yeah. No. Xenon Insignia would be really weird. So, But we do have Xenon Banner and all of that stuff. Okay. So I think for this one, I want to do small tokens, things like Amber Coin and other stuff, in addition to like buffing Delif. And for that, we're going to use stuff like... We're also going to have like a big ol' pile of interesting time stuff. We're going to do Eternity Core, we're going to do Xenon Obelisk, we're going to do Clock of Stolen Hours, um, we are going to do... Uh, da -da 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 -da. Call for Aid is a possibility? Are we going to do Relics? Xenon has an interesting Relics theme, but I'm not sure if that's what I'm looking for. We can also do like some interesting life gain stuff, uh, but yeah, Clock of Stolen Hours and probably Horn of Plenty as well. Because I think with like this much Xenon stuff, I think I'm going to be pretty happy with that kind of setup. So, and then we can run like a lot of good time legendaries, cards like Moonstone Vanguard, cards like Curse Prophet Delif does not have... Okay, cool. 
Uh, let's look at weapons for Delith. Anything that actually really makes sense to put on them. Uh, Tome of Repetition allows us to ramp, which is kind of cool. That'll probably make it into the list regardless of what else we end up doing. Divining Rod cares about unblockable units. How many unblockable units do we have? Could we actually build Delith unblockable? That'd probably be pretty hard considering how many unblockable units there are. Heirloom Seeker, Lothrai Nightblade, Lighthoof does not have unblockable, Void Drummer does. Dizo Cabal Chairman does, Azindel does, yeah, it's too small for Divining, so that's not going to happen. Okay, but weapons. Uh, Star Reader's Blade is pretty good on Delif. I'd say that's a really strong card for us, and we haven't put it in the other deck, so that seems good. Uh, Surgeon's Saw, of course, doesn't play because we already have one. Thry Falchion is great on Delif. Dueling Pistols is probably fine on Delith. Getting Quick Draw doesn't really matter. So yeah, no, I think we'll leave that alone. We'll take the Null Blade. That's solid, solid removal in our colors. Uh, Street Leecher is really interesting, but won't actually be very good against a singleton setup. Uh, Gun Rustler, Headsman's Axe. We do have uh, Headsman's Axe, which is a decent big ol' card against Delith and helps us out if we're playing a bunch of token cards. So that seems really reasonable. Blister Sting Claws, we don't care. Iron Hook, we don't care. Name taker's interesting, but not like actually good. <laughs> Last word is interesting, especially if we get a big ramp going. I'm kind of interested in doing a big ramp setup. And then like weapon wise in time, there's not a lot to play with. We got Healer's Cloak, we have Twin Fang Cobra, we have Staff of Speed. Staff of Speed's pretty decent. Okay, Staff of Speed also gives us a lot of information. So that's something that we're probably gonna go after. Okay, so that's our weapons, and we have our obelisks, so we have some good unblockable damage type stuff, uh, in addition to probably running like infinite hourglass to get some like actual blocking going, and I believe I saved the corrupt for this side. Yes, I did. Uh, well, I'm looking at it as though I've, I haven't used it on the other one, but yes, I did take it out of the other one, so we have the corrupt on this side. I also saved the annihilate and the suffocate. So we have those, and then we can do Death Strike. We can do Feeding, can't do Feeding Time, but we can do In Cold Blood. We can do... I don't even know if we want to do more. In, in Cold Blood's fine, we can also do, ah, hmm, we'll think. Okay, Provocateur gives us some interesting unblockable stuff. That card is deadly and is like a decently strong shadow card. Governor Sahin cares about relics, could help us out with some stuff. I don't know if that's going to be super important, but it does allow us to cycle into other relics using Infinite Hourglass. So we could do like a mild relics theme here. We'll think about that. Heartstopper is weird. Um, like we could do a Heartstopper thing, but I don't know if it's going to be any good. Extinguish, we don't care. Dumping Ground has some potential. I'm still not sure what the overall theme of this deck is going to be. Cards like Corrupted Umbrin, sort of like Limited Bombs could be interesting. We could do Elves, Vishni, Lithrai High Blood is super strong. We have a lot of like really strong threes. We could actually get pretty aggressive and sort of mid range with that build. And I think that actually sounds pretty interesting. Shadow Stalker has Unblockable at Night and a Tribute of Nightfall. Sadistic Valkyrie cares about lifesteal. Um, I have a potential for like a mild life force theme. I'd actually love to do a Sadistic Valkyrie deck. Krista Contus Herald draws us cards. That's absolutely going to be in the Shadow deck. Life Drinker, Livia. Uh, we'll play Livia here. Livia is a lifesteal unit. Okay. The Lathrai Dire Beast gives us lifesteal to other things and is a lifesteal unit itself. Wow, this card's really strong. I actually didn't even remember this card existed. Okay. Corinne Merchant is ours to take, in addition to Ebon Dune Smuggler. Okay, I think I'm moving away from Relics and into um, Lifesteal. Like, we've got, like, a potential for a Katra setup with, like, a decent amount of Life Force. Let's look at all other Life Force options. We have Mask of Torment, Blood Call Invoker, and, of course, the ever-popular, not Hate Cleaver. Xenon Fanatic's not bad. Can we do the entire combo here? No, no, we need um we need the green card to do that, so that's not gonna happen. Sentinel's might. <laughs> Beckoning Lumen. This just might work. Discipline Dominera, Cult of Aspirant. Cult Aspirant, definitely. Discipline Dominera, probably not. Okay. So, Voyaging Lumen's a no. Um, I don't think we have any other Life Force stuff we want to do. We could do Hall of Lost Kings. Especially since we have a decent amount of ramp and we want to do some serious payoff at the top. 
Moonstone Vanguard gains life. This, we're actually at 21 units. I'm a little bit surprised. Uh, one drops and two drops are not super present, but this deck is kind of slow and interesting, so I think it's probably going to be fine. Let's look at, like, Cabal Cutthroat has lifesteal. Black Hall War Leader is super strong. Uh, Xenon Lifespeaker gives everything lifesteal. That doesn't have lifesteal already. Augury allows us to pick up cards. Uh, Cupbearer is fine, but I think we want Xenon Temple and Dizo's Office. And we can also take Vara's Favor. Tildir's Favored. Should we leave Seek Answers for the blue deck? Seems possible. Temple Scribe. Let's throw Teacher of Humility in to have a little bit of a two-drop. Maybe Trailmaker as well. Okay, so I came out of, like, Relics and Weapons here. I think we're going to not run Headsman's Axe. We're going to move a little bit further away from uh, Dumping Ground. Like, I was going for, like, a Mild Tokens theme, but I think I'm actually pretty happy with what we got. So we got Lifesteal stuff all over the place. We have Lothry Falchion. We're running just a ton of Life Force stuff along with Fanatic, Invoker, Moonstone Vanguard, and then we can maybe like scheme and do some other things for our last like really important cards. So that feels pretty good. I'm gonna cut the In Cold Blood because I don't think, I don't actually remember what Totes is running. Um, Andrik is on the list, so In Cold Blood could like kill Andrik forever. Oh, but that would be rude. Let's not do that. Let's just do a scheme or a, uh, better yet, the uh, Kulva deck. And I've got one power in here, the Amber Coin. I have good fixing overall. Heartstopper didn't end up being a thing. Governor Sahin. I could feasibly play towards like something very, very big, like a last word. And that'd actually be pretty worth it. I don't think I want to do Null Blade, because that's like, you know, it's void shut down, and I don't think that's gonna matter too much. Uh Staff of Speed is still probably good. Anything with endurance is very good. Infinite Hourglass is still probably very good. We can steal the entire enemy void, which is cool. Yeah, weapons on things is good. I think I do want the Infinite Hourglass. And the last card I think I want is the last word. Because that just seems like a really interesting card to play with Governor Sahin, if we are playing Governor Sahin, which I think we are. Yeah, cool. Okay, cool. And then that's that's a pretty good deck. I like it. So Amber Waystone goes in here. We get to run Crest. We get to run Seat. And we get to run Banner. We also get to run uh, Cabal Tactic, which I think is reasonable, and Temple Standard, which I also think is reasonable. And uh, are we going to go Monument 2? The Puma seems right. The Amber Monument does not. Could use a little more power there. Maybe we cut the Blood Call Invoker since it's kind of a minimal card. Eh, I think Life Force triggers are probably important, so let's, let's keep the Blood Call Invoker. Blood Call Invocation does not go in, obviously. And then we haven't built a market for this yet, so let's put Invocation in there along with... Um, are there any good Xenon removal cards? I am the Abductor is really strong to have in general. Uh, Banish is super strong. I don't know why I'm not running Banish in the main board. Clearly I should be running Banish in the main board. Let's run Death Strike in the side. Okay, have we picked up any like extra stuff that we shouldn't have picked up? I think we're okay. Jesus Rocket cares about armor. I don't think I can gain armor out of anything, so that's fine. Dumping Ground, Dueling Pistols, Devious Drone. Xenon Temple. Let's put Dizo's Office in the market. And I... It is a smuggler setup, so the only thing I can put in the market for anything else is Amethyst Coin. Which feels just fine. I could also do Amethyst Waste Down. But yeah, coin seems fine. Let's do that. 
So that's good. Add power. 77 out of 75? Eh. Okay, so it thinks I'm a little bit light. I can probably live with that. You have the Xenon set up here. Honestly, I think it's probably good. Or at least for a 20 minute deck, it seems fine. Uh, do I just want to leave it at 77 out of 75? It's got to be 75 cards, I think. So I think that's a rule. So we will cut one more card. Toma Repetition needs to stay in. Cut a Shadow Sigil. Cut a Shadow Sigil. I'm done. Okay, cool. All right, that leaves Lorai. Lorai is going to be the tricky one. So here we go. Relics. What have we got? Pitfall Trap. Vargo's Pelt is interesting, could actually be pretty good. Uh, Lorai the Appraiser can get Vargo's Pelt pretty quickly, and having two one-drop weapons could be pretty good. So we should build a little bit around Vargo's Pelt. Frost Talisman has a really good payoff. Maelstrom Bell, not so much, but I would play Storm Talisman. That card's actually reasonable. Uh, I think I should play two of each type of card that has something useful going on. Island Sanctum's fine. Uh, let's go with Eye of Winter. That card's great. Mind Link... Uh, you know, like, we might actually build a transform deck. This could be okay. We could actually go entirely for Mind Link, and then Lorai could frequently hit it. But Sunken Tower is also good. There's a lot of good three-drop relics. Winter's Crown is great. It's literally the only four-drop. Staff of Stories is fine. And then we've got Crown, which doesn't count, and Quicksilver Mirror, which is amazing. I don't have a six at all. Good to know. Elvish Swindler can play two costs, which is good. We should grab that for sure. I don't think we play Snowdrift Delver. Okay, so transform-wise, Poaching Drake. We are actually going to want a lot of transform because we don't have the ability to deal other th do other things. Um, so Poaching Drake, Polymorph, Changey Stick, Unstable Form. What else do we have? And one of your cards is transformed into a unit. So Unstable Form is good. Uh, Twilight Hunter is pretty decent. Royal Decree is cool. Bam Sneaky Peaky is super awesome. I think we can play a copy of that. Yeah, Last Light Druid transforms everything. Uh, which, yeah, that should be good. Deranged Dynamancer transforms. Shapeshifter's Mass transforms. Let's just build a transform deck. This is fun. Mass Entomancy? Uh, yeah, we'll play a Mass Entomancy. Tyrannize, love it. Reign of Frogs, definitely. Regression, definitely. Uh, Jotun Burst Song? I don't know if I'm going to have the Yetis. We'll find out. And then Hatchery Hunter is like a bunch of 5-5s five -five things. That'll stabilize our deck. So we get to run Island's Favor, and we definitely need to. I specifically saved um, Seek Answers for this deck. And then other power bases. I don't know if there's any other like good power cards in blue. Cobalt Coin, Clan Standard both play. They don't count towards our total. Cobalt Waystone plays. Cobalt Monument plays. Oh yeah, it's a transform. Any transmute is actually going to be good here. And I can't run crests in this deck, so that's going to be a little bit of an issue. But that's okay. Entomancy, yeah, no, it's fine to transform a card into another color. I think that would be way too much of an issue if it didn't, if it, like, if we had to keep track of that. No, that would be awful. So I've got 12 units right now, and I need to add more. Um, Dusk Raider is an obvious choice. Let's let's take a look at like what kind of good blue units there are. Uh, so I'm basically just looking at units right now since we've already put in like a ton of transform. Uh, Cliffside Porter is nothing. Blind Storyteller is nothing. Uh, Tynomancy Enthusiast is great. This deck's going to be really weird. Gust Rider and Flexible Familiar. Love Flexible Familiar. Uh, and we can actually do some cool things with it. Messenger Hawk can play extra copies of Lorai or other cards. I can actually like cheat and get four of something that's good. I don't know if there's anything that's good though. Mischief Yeti, Powder Glider, Sinister Opportunist. Sinister Opportunist cares about curses, which is kind of okay, but I think that's not actually any good. Bully, Spy, uh, I'd probably play Spy, just to have units. <laughs> uh, Cloud Snake Breeder is okay, Dusk Raider is probably my best 2-drop. Our 2-drop choices might be limited. Fearless Yeti's fine. Honored Skyguard's fine. Lita's Apprentice is good. 
Cartographer's good. Okay, never mind, I do have good two drop choices. Iceberg Mason? Cares about Yetis, which again, I'm not sure if I'm doing Jotun Burst Song or not. That'll be a lot. We'll, we'll, we'll see if it's worth doing. Snowdrift Elver is a relic of a random type. I don't actually think I have anything that benefits me from, like, that actually makes it good to have relics. So I think we're probably fine. Um... I feel like ways to protect Lorai might be important. Storm Tamer Operative is interesting. I'd have to remember what uh, what's being run. Um, so let's see here. Yeah, there's a Jishu deck and a Milos deck, right? Or wait, and was Milos the last one? It was Bam, Jishu, and Andrek. So Bam might be running some blue removal, but it'd probably be in the form of um, that bolt card, which I should be running as well. Soothsayer, definitely. And then the other bolt card is uh, Frost Bolt, I think it's called. Jarl, Iceheart, Justa, regular Jotun. I think we're going to have to try to run enough uh, goodies here. Snow Sculptor is a bunch of card draw. I don't think I care about that. Rost is ridiculous and should definitely be played in any mono blue deck. Magus of the Mist, Pearlescent Drake. Probably not Keen Saddleback. Feast Color is also good. Big Brother is also good. Oh, Big Brother is so fun here. Alu Death Dreamer is Curses Only. I don't think I care about Alu Death Dreamer. Yeti Pult is good. Yeah, we have enough small yetis that we can play around. Torgoth is a big beater. Thudrock is a big beater. Slush Dumper is minimal. Skyward Seer allows us to pick up some things, but not anything super important. I don't think Serpent Trainer's on the list. I think we've already hit enough fours. Yeah, we're already good on fours. So that leaves... Oh, well, Eva might actually be a thing. Are there any Inspires that we want to play for, like Dusk Raider? I think we did play Dusk Raider, right? Yeah. Tundra Explorer cares about spells, which might be important. Trumpeting Warheller gives killer to things. That's pretty good. Temple Shihan's minimal, but probably fine. Peaked Up Trekker scares, cares about scouting, and I don't care about scouting. Okay, so that's nine spells, four power, 60 cards, plus Sea Cancer's an island's favor. We gotta cut some stuff. Let's look at our curve overall. We're a bit heavy on threes. Furflinger probably doesn't need to stay, although it is a good Yeti. Temple Shion's really powerful. Like, all of my 3-drop three 3-3s three should probably stick. Deranged Dynamancer is... strange? I feel like this card might actually be pretty powerful in our list. Thudrock is not any good here. Powerful Yeti, but, like, we have better Yetis. Namely Justa and... Yeah, big old pile of things. So Yeti Spy. Um, I did choose to keep Yeti Spy and Fearless Yeti. Yeah, we want to keep all of our Yetis. I think uh, damage-wise, we're not going to be reducing a lot with our one that shuts down that kind of stuff. Uh, didn't actually run it anyways. Okay, the lead as Apprentice is interesting. Could be okay. Honored Skyguard is terrible. That is a big flyer. Nah, let's ditch Honored Skyguard. I have 31 units, so I'm actually like really keen on actually ditching them. Attachment-wise, I ended up with a lot of threes, maybe too many threes. Island Sanctum, Eye of Winter, and Mind Link are all very good. I think I want all of them, but Mind Link is the most interesting one. And I can get like... I probably want to play pretty much as many of them as I can. Yeah, we want to play basically all of these relics, unfortunately. <laughs> it's a little weird. Do I have any other one-drop relics? Because if I do, I'm actually going to play them. Can't do knuckle bones. Yeah, no other one-drop relics. Could do Maelstrom Bell, but I'm not going to do that. Okay, so that leaves... Uh, we need Frostbolt, we need Parry.
Static Bolt's terrible here, but Ice Bolt is fine. Dark Bolt. I don't think I have enough Nightfall stuff, do I? Do I have any Nightfall stuff? I have a few. We have Dusk Raider, we have... We have some options. Okay, so I think our fives are a little heavy. Pearlescent Drake can go. Hatchery Hunter is probably good to leave. Oh, didn't have quite enough dust. That's unfortunate. Sorry to hear that. Okay, well, we're about ready. Uh, Mass Entomancy is looking pretty good. Whispering Wind might actually be good in this deck. It's It's got some potential. Family Charter? Yeah, Family Charter's card draw. That could be okay. I don't know about Family Charter here. Oh, yeah, it's actually a cheap relic. That's fair. Relics and Colorless. We didn't even think of that. There are Colorless Relics. Recon Tower? Um, I guess there aren't many Colorless Relics. It's literally those two. Astromancer's Compass. Eh, I'm not going to play that. Recon Tower, though, that's a really strong one for us. Okay, so I'm at 61 out of 75. Nightfall cards in blue. We're running Dusk Raider. We're not running Shiver. Maybe we should, though. Darkveil Agent is a 2 2 Nightfall. I think we run that and we cut um, Lita's Apprentice. Dark Stalker is just like a really beastly Nightfall card. Nocturnal Observer is great. Winter's Grasp is pretty miserable, but could be okay. I don't know if I'm going to have enough support for it. We're probably going to run Permafrost too then. Am I right in doing a mild Nightfall theme here? This is a lot of cards. This deck has good top end. It can play out like a ton of power, but I'm not sure if it's particularly aggressive. Deranged Dynamancer is big, big dinosaurs with Vargo. Like, I love the idea of the 7-7 seven, seven dinos. Torgoff, Ice Cap Trader, Poaching Drake, Soothsayer, Last Light Druid. Funnily enough, Torgoff is like the card to cut there. <laughs> oh, we can Rain of Frogs their hero. I think that's fine in a mono blue setting. I can live with that. Cartographer is draw discard. I think I'm going to use my Nightfall stuff instead. I definitely want Royal Decree. Parry and Ice Bolt. Cloud Snake Harrier, probably. Am I comfy enough with my two drops to play Elvish Swindler? Yeah. Magus and Rost. Hatchery Hunter's gone. I don't like it. Poaching Drake is probably gone? This card's always been minimal for me. I've got a lot of fours right now. What if we cut Mine Link and then just went straight for... Um, we ditch Reign of Frogs so we don't have to go after our opponent's hero. We'll keep... Uh, might ditch Polymorph even. I don't need to Polymorph anything now. Because now I'm just focused on um, Eye of Winter and Island Sanctum, which are both cards I really like. And I am transforming my own units as opposed to my opponent's stuff, which means I don't have to run Regression or other cards that really suck. Sunken Tower is still fine. This card's really expensive. Let's get rid of that. I've got a lot of good threes. I guess I've only got two good threes, but that's still worth it. And copying Reckless uh, Lorais seems actually not that reasonable. I knew this was going to be the hard one. Acquisitive Crow? Yeah, Acquisitive Crow is probably in here. That card is way too strong not to take. And it will get us unstable forms on occasion. Twilight Hermit is feeling like it's probably gone. Like, the Nightfall bonus was nice, but I think we have better cards. Darkfield Agent is out. Dynamancy Enthusiast. I didn't really get a lot of good twists going on. And I don't care about Lorai the Appraiser beyond, like, an extra one point of health. Do we want to run a Furnish somewhere? I can't actually play Quicksilver Mirror. So let's not. Let's just, let's make it five. Okay, so that's four power. Yeah, okay, so we're actually up to the point where we need to be. 
25 Primal, plenty of Nightfall, a little bit of card draw, Flexible Familiar, which can be targeted by Changey Stick, Shapeshifter's Mask, Parry, Tyrannize. Tyrannize is not a good target for Flexible Familiar, that's fine. Are there any good blue spells that can target Flexible Familiar? Mirror Image. Oh, I don't want Jotun Cyclops, although it's a good card. An 8 Conviction I want. Honor of Claws I want. Wisdom of the Elders I want. Clutchmate I want. Sudden Schism I want. So we're adding back in now. <laughs> Gleaming Shield. Oh, that's the card I need to duplicate. Yeah, that's perfect. Brilliant Idea we don't need. End of Hostilities we don't need. Kind of hard not to run End of Hostilities, right? I don't actually care about Elvish Swindler. What if we ditched Last Light Druid entirely? Then I wouldn't have to run any Nightfall stuff like Shiver. We're currently not running a market, so I could market a few of these cards. Namely, Gleaming Shield. That'd be a good way to keep this down. Merchant, Genev, Market, Gleaming Shield. We're going to have to cut the one from the main. So Gleaming Shield's gone. Jotun Burst Song. I'll add a Celestial Omen. I think Burst Song does go in here. I'm not sure if I have any primal cards left to play. Like, we got the coin, the uh, waystone, the monument, and the standard in here. Mistville Drake seems reasonable. Quicksilver Mirror seems like a good card to have as the last card in the setup. Tamaris Earthshaker seems like a decent option. So does Scouting Party. Okay, we're not going to run Gleaming Shield. I don't actually need the... Well, maybe I do need the buff. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. I do. Okay, so this is mostly late game stuff. Like, not a lot of, like, specific answers. I think that's fine. I think I'm going to ditch Last Light Druid. I just don't have the Nightfall support for it. That means that I can continue to ditch Nightfall cards. Which I would really like to do. I don't want to run a lot of Nightfall. So we're going to cut... Um, we cut Dark Veil Agent already. I can cut Dark Stalker. I can cut Alu, I can cut um, Furflinger. Yeah, I don't like Furflinger. How many actual transform effects do we have now? Shapeshifter's Mask, Deranged Dynamancer, Last Light Druid is one that I was thinking about running. Flexible Familiar, good idea at the time. That actually seems great. <laughs> Just a random card that's not blue. How nice will that be? And Tyrannize. We're still running Tyrannize. We'll probably run Hatchery Hunter. Okay. So that still gets us back into the situation where we're cutting some cards. Gleaming Shield's out. Early drops are still pretty bad. Don't have Lightning Strike. Don't have... Um... Some of the solid removal that we could be running. Got to run most of the relics in the main. Not sure I'm sold on Storm Talisman or Changey Stick. Changey Stick in particular is probably bad at this point. It is a nice thing to stick on um, Flexible Familiar, but we have other options. Maybe we don't. <laughs> we have a few. I'm going to cut Nocturnal Observer. At least one card to cut. It's not going to be a good idea at the time. <laughs> Let's say Sudden Schism. We're going to use Clutchmate to copy Carnosaurs, so seems good. Okay. 
I think we're ready. This was a pile in some crazy ways. There's a lot of interesting stuff happening here.